In today's video, you'll learn how to set up WordPress on a DigitalOcean droplet. So why DigitalOcean for WordPress? Well, one of the obvious things is the 60 day free trial. This is one of the longest ones I've ever seen. So if you want to try it out and see if hosting on a cloud VM is suitable for you, this is probably the way I'd recommend to do it. So this is what I'm using for the tutorial today. Um, it's also very cost effective and feature rich. It has similar features to something like Google Cloud, uh, AWS on Amazon and Oracle Cloud, but much more cost effective than those big uh, infrastructure providers. And I should also add, this is not a sponsored video. So you can use the same method on other cloud providers like um, Vulture and Racknerd. Those also are very cost effective options too. Um, but for this one, you can get that 60 day free trial in the description at um, idspot.com.au slash digital ocean. So check that out if you're interested. So I'm going to break this tutorial basically into three parts here, setting up the droplet on digital ocean. I'm going to be using a uh, cloud panel to uh, manage the droplet. So that's a really easy, um, lightweight uh, interface. It makes managing your droplet really easy. Then I'm going to install WordPress on there. Cloud Panel makes that super easy. Just a couple of clicks to install WordPress on there. And then I'll go through some security and optimization recommendations uh, for your droplet. So um, if all this sounds interesting, then keep watching. So first step, head to that link in the description and get started with our free trial. Then just go through the sign up process. After you've signed up and logged in, you'll be taken to your dashboard. First thing from our DigitalOcean dashboard, we want to create a droplet to choose something close to your intended audience. For an English audience, uh, the United States is usually pretty good. And then the next step here, we choose our operating system. So Ubuntu, and we're going to go with the long-term support version. That is the LTS one here, 2404. That is currently supported by Cloud Panel in their documentation. Um, I'll leave links so you can check which version is currently supported, but that's the one as I'm making this video. For our droplet size, the basic one is fine for what we're doing today. And you can choose the CPU option. I kind of like this premium AMD. It does cost a little bit more than the regular one, but it gives you a little bit more um, performance, particularly with the um, disk drive. And we can use the cheapest one for this demonstration. It'll run just fine. You may want more memory depending on how many things you want to install on the server. But for what we're doing now, this one is going to be fine. And I'm going to leave backups unchecked. You can spend a little extra on that, but you can also back up in other ways as well for free. So I'm going to leave that unchecked for this demo here. And authentication method recommended to use an SSH key here. Alternatively, you can use a strong password, but SSH key is more secure. So I'm going to show you how to do this one at the moment. So we can select new SSH key here. And they have the instructions here for generating an SSH key on Mac or Linux. Um, on Windows, I prefer to use PuTTY. That's still my favorite way of doing SSH in Windows. So you can get PuTTY from PuTTY.org. And after downloading PuTTY, it comes with a tool called PuTTY Gen. We can generate SSH keys with. So um, click generate here and you can generate random data by moving your mouse here. It'll create a strong SSH key for you. I just think PuTTY gives us a nicer way of managing our keys and SSH connections. So that's just personal preference, but feel free to use the standard terminal if you like. Now I'm going to save my private key. Um, you can add a password onto your private key, but if it's a private computer, you don't, probably don't need one. I'm going to save that one here. So I'll just put uh, DigitalOcean as the key name. I'm going to save the public one as well. DO pub, that'll do. And we can grab our public key here, just copy it. This is what we need for DigitalOcean. I'm going to copy that one and head back to our droplet, paste that in. Now we can name this one. I'm going to call it tutorial, this example here, and add that in. And you can have multiple keys selected. I'm just going to go with the one that we just created there, the tutorial key. And then we're going to continue. We can change the host name to something custom here. I'm going to call it Cloud Panel Tutorial, but that's free to change. And we can just go ahead and click Create. And this will take a minute, so just be patient here. After that's all done, we'll have our IP here. We can copy that. We can connect to this using PuTTY. So I'm going to load up PuTTY here. Let's go ahead and do that. Here we go. Now we can paste the IP in here and we're going to connect to this as root. So put root at the front there at the IP address. And we can save that as, uh, I'll do, call it do tute. There we go. And I also want to add that SSH key. So go to SSH key under auth here. And if we expand that, we can have our credentials. So we just need to browse to wherever we save that um, private key early in the video that we generated using PuttyGen. So there's our key. And we just need to head back and save this now. So back to the session and we can hit save and we should be able to connect to this. So let's open that up. First time you connect, you'll just have to hit accept here and this will connect hopefully. There we go. And before we install our cloud panel on here, let's do some updates to our server. So let's go back to our uh, cloud panel documentation. It'll give us a, uh, an example of how to use this. So we're using this command first to install our updates and install the required 
packages. So let's do that. In Putty, you can just use the right click to paste in the command there and just run that there. This will take a minute. So um, I'm going to come back in a couple of minutes after the updates are finished running. You may get some of these confirmation screens during the update. All you have to do is hit uh, enter for OK there and let it continue. OK, now our updates are all done. We can start installing Cloud Panel. So this is uh, the script that we give here. So we can run the installer with our preferred database engine. It supports MySQL 8, uh, MariaDB 11.4 and MariaDB 10.11 at the moment. So I'm going to go with uh, MariaDB. I think that gives us slightly better performance in WordPress. That's what we're going to um, focus on today. So I'm going to copy this one. But again, just use whichever one you prefer. So I've just copied the script and right click to paste it in and then press enter. And again, we just wait for this one to finish. It does take a while, so just let it do its thing. Great, so that is all done. It did take a few minutes, but we can access our panel now here. This is the address we want to use, so we can copy that. You just highlight in Putty, that'll copy it to the clipboard, and we can put it into our um, address bar in our browser here. Click through the uh, warning there and proceed to our panel. Now we just fill this one out here and agree to the terms and create the admin user here. Now we can go ahead and log in with the credentials that we just created. So for our next step, what I want to do is replace this IP address with a custom domain and SSH certificate for our panel here. So I went ahead and purchased a domain earlier, Ideaspot Space. I got that from Namecheap. I'll link in the description to a previous video where I bought a domain on Namecheap if you've never been through that process. But wherever you buy your domain, it's going to be pretty similar. Um, all you have to do is find your uh, name server option here. So in the domain list um, under my domain, you've got name servers here. What I want is a custom DNS here. And I'm going to set this up with Cloudflare's DNS. So uh, if you don't have a Cloudflare account already, you can go ahead and um, sign up for a free Cloudflare account. That's what I'm going to use for this demonstration here. So from our Cloudflare dashboard, what I want to do here is add a domain. And we are using ideaspot.space for this example here. And go ahead, click continue. And we can use the free plan here. It will try and import your DNS records. If you've got some DNS records on here already, you can uh, actually just continue. Um, I'm going to start fresh here. So I'm actually going to uh, delete all these. I've used this uh, domain for other tutorials. So um, I'm just going to start fresh here and just continue to activation. Um, but you're free to keep your previous records if you want to keep them as well. For example, if you've already got your email records set up for your domain, you obviously want to keep those in there. But these are the name server names that we need for our domain in Namecheap. So I'm going to copy that one here and go back to Namecheap, put that in as our name server number one. And the other one there, Virginia, was our next name server there. Just paste those in, hit the tick button there, that's going to save it. And so it should look like that. And back to Cloudflare here, we can click continue. Now it does say it can take some time for your name servers to change over from the previous name server to the Cloudflare name server. It depends on where your domain is hosted. Namecheap, it'll be pretty quick, um, but come back in maybe 15 minutes. If you want to check the progress, you can go to whatsmydns.net, put your domain name in there, select um, NS for name server there and hit search. And once you see that most of the uh, locations are hitting the Cloudflare DNSs, you're pretty re much ready to go. So back on Cloudflare here, let's go for DNS. And we can add some records here. So let's add one here. We want an A record and that's going to go to the root. That's the at symbol. Put our IP address in there and then save that when that's ready. The next one we need is for our panel. So that one is, I'll just call this one panel. You can actually name that however you want. Um, I'm going to point out to the IP address as well. Save that in. And the final one we want is for www. So that is a C name. And that is www. And we're going to send that to Ideaspot Space. So, oops, hang on. Ideaspot Space. There we go. And just while we're setting up the panel, we need to unproxy this one. So I'm just going to edit that and I'm going to unprox unproxy that panel subdomain for the setup process. So that looks all good. So back in our cloud panel that we've set up on the IP address, we're going to go to the admin area. We can add our panel in here now. So we're going to go to settings and we can set up a cloud panel custom domain here. So in our case, the one I set up was panel at uh, ideaspot space, panel.ideaspot.space is what we're going with here. After you hit save, it takes a minute and it will say custom domain has been saved. So it's really just for that process because it uses a Let's Encrypt certificate. It needs to be able to see the um, unproxied IP address of the server to be able to issue that Let's Encrypt certificate. So that looks all good. We can go back to sites. We can start adding sites now. So we can add one here. So there's a few different ways we can do this. WordPress, PHP, Node.js, Static, HTML, Python, Reverse Proxy. I'm going to do WordPress for this example. And we just need to fill this out. 
So again, in this uh, situation, I'm using ID space as my domain and I've got a username. They've got automatically strong passwords here. Let's go ahead and click create. So that looks all good. Make sure you go ahead and copy all these credentials, keep them safe. I've just pasted them over here for now, but um, we'll need those for later, especially WordPress, log into our WordPress site. But from here, we can go back to sites. And what I want to do here is put some Cloudflare SSH, um, SSL certificates on here. So we go to SSL here and I want to put a import certificate. Now we can put um, Cloudflare certificates in here. So I'll show you how to do that from our Cloudflare dash. We go to SSL here and I want a uh, origin server. So from here we can create a certificate and all we need to do is basically just uh, hit create. This is going to give us a 15 year certificate for um, all the subdomains and our main domain there. So we click create, we're going to get our certificates. There's our origin certificate. So we're going to paste that into the certificate box there. And the other one is the private key that goes into the private key. This one can be blank, you can import and install. Great. Now we have this imported certificate in here um, for Cloudflare. We don't actually need to proxy our subdomain as well now. So we can go back to our DNS and we can unproxy that one rather turn the proxy on good okay the other thing we should check at this point is the ssl uh, encryption mode so click configure there just make sure you're set to full strict i know sometimes it does default to flexible so make sure it's set to full strict that will avoid some ssl errors on your website potentially and um, go ahead and click save it'll also make it more secure as well so full strict is enabled there and our DNS records look all good there. So you should at least have these three records plus any others that you imported earlier. But that means we're pretty much finished with Cloudflare setup. Now that that's all done, we shouldn't need to use our IP address to access the panel anymore. We can go to actual panel ideas.space and we can log in using the same credentials when we first created Cloud Panel. So that's what we chose when we first set up Cloud Panel. Log in with that. And here we are. We've got our uh, site set up with panel ID.space as our. Uh, main panel address and we can access our actual website here idea dot, dot, ideaspot.space um, here we go we've got our wordpress site set up and we should be able to get to our admin screen wp-admin our credentials this time are the ones we generated when we created the site so that's um, that's this one here for wordpress um, the wp admin one so we should be able to log in with that so this looks all good. We've got our WordPress set up here. We can go ahead, appearance and themes, install themes, um, just generate a custom WordPress site. That's all fairly straightforward. But before we do that, there's a few cool um, security and performance things we can do back in Cloud Panel. First thing I'll do is under security, because we're running through Cloudflare and it's all proxied through Cloudflare, we can go down here and only allow traffic through Cloudflare only. So that is a nice way of um, protecting your server from outside traffic, but everything has to go through the Cloudflare um, to access your site. So that's a really nice security feature that comes with Cloud Panel. The other thing we've got is the Varnish memory cache. So uh, we can install a WordPress plugin. And if you uh, search for Cloud Panel in the plugin repository, you'll find this um, Cloud Panel Varnish cache. You can install that. And if we activate that one, that looks okay. From here, we can actually enable our Varnish cache in Cloud Panel as well. So just turn that one on and hit save. And that looks all good there. And in your WordPress dashboard, we will have under settings, you'll have your CLP varnish cache here. You can make sure that it's enabled there and save that in as well. So that looks all good. Now I'll mention some other optional performance improvements you can make on your WordPress website. So in plugins, you can search for Cloudflare. There's one that's really good called Cloudflare Super Page Cache. This is the one um, that I'd recommend. You get a uh, free global CDN through Cloudware's network when you use this with your WordPress site. So um, I've covered that on the channel before. I'll link to that in the description. Um, make sure it's this one. Don't use the actual Cloudflare one. This one is not as good as um, this optimal uh, plugin. The other couple of things that might be worth adding are um, an image optimization plugin. So something like Smoosh has a pretty good free um, plan. There's other ones that do something similar like um, Imagify and Ooh is the other one that's pretty good, that, that one there. <clears throat> but Smoosh 
is um, a very good one million active users. I've used this on plenty of sites just on their free plan. So Smoosh. And the other one that's quite good for doing some more optimizations with like um, CSS and JavaScript is Optimize. So I've covered that on the channel. Optimize has a million active users, very good free plan as well for some additional WordPress optimizations. Now these are optional. You probably still get good performance, just how it is running right now. Um, if you're happy with how it's running right now, it might not make, make that much of a difference adding these on. And the other thing you can look at is securing the WordPress website with security plugins. So this is optional as well. I think out of the box is still um, very good security, but some people want to add on additional things like WordFence is probably the most popular one. Um, the other one I'd like to use is um, all-in-one security as well. So um, check those out if you're interested. Probably the most important security thing you can do is keep backups of your site. So um, Vivid is probably my, one of my favorites and all-in-one um, WP migration and backup is another great one as well. So either of those gives you a free option for backing things up. Um, check out my tutorial on how to do this for free because I don't think the current uh, version of this um, is very good in the free version, but I've got a workaround for you if you follow my old video. Now, the other thing you want to do for security is keep your WordPress site updated. So that's easy to manage through your dashboard. You've got updates there. You can also set up automatic updates and updating the cloud panel itself. Um, all you do is run the CLP update through putty um, from the command line whenever you want to update cloud panel. But that basically covers all your basic um, security and optimization steps for your um, DigitalOcean WordPress site. So that covers our setup with DigitalOcean. If you're still considering hosting options, I think uh, DigitalOcean is probably one of them. The other one you might want to check out is RackNerd and Vulture. I cover those on the channel as well. I'll put links in the description for those. Also very good value. The other one that's much more easy to set up if you found that one a bit complicated, uh, Cloudways is probably the easiest one to run with and that has a free trial as well. So I'll put a Cloudways link in the description too. But any of those is going to give you really good results. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Again, this is not a sponsored video. So um, feel free to use whatever you prefer. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.